Hello and welcome again to my Physical Science Online Video Lecture Supplement Series. In today's video, I'm going to basically reply to a question that I received in my email. So let's look at the mailbag. Let's open up our mailbag. It basically says, I have a request, <clears throat> I have a question regarding these types of questions. Oh, a question about questions. Okay. Quote, an object is placed 66 centimeters from a convex spherical mirror with a focal length of 55 centimeters. Uh, I mean, that's a statement, not a question, but I guess I'll read into it that the question is describe the image formed by this mirror and object. Um, in any case, the message goes on. I think my biggest problem is setting the question up. Okay. I've already studied the key terms vertex and focal point. I know that F equals R over 2. If you could please help me further, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks. All right. I'll see what I can do with this video. Um, there's, you didn't really complete the question that you're asking me, so I'm kind of reading a little bit into it that your problem is that you're trying to figure out something about the image formed by this combination of object and mirror. Uh, I hope that this is what you're asking for. Uh, so let's see how we do that. It's easiest maybe to begin by drawing a little diagram of our system. So our system basically involves a spherical convex mirror. This black line represents what's called the principal axis. And so what it is is it's the axis that runs through the very center of the mirror. So you could think of this mirror as basically being a giant sphere. And the giant sphere therefore has a center. It has a radius of r. And r is equal to twice whatever the focal length is. So our focal point would be right here. The focal point we label f, the center we label C, and this distance from edge of mirror to focal point is the distance F. So this is the basic setup of this problem. These are the points of interest. We now need to have an object. So maybe if we go a distance F from the mirror on the other side, that puts us about right here. You might want, by the way, to use a ruler and a protractor and set up some scale for this kind of problem. I'm not doing this because it's frankly more trouble than it's worth to do on the tablet that I use to, to uh, draw these things on uh, since I'm not able to actually draw on the screen that, that the image actually appears on. Uh, so I don't want to screw around with guessing and checking a bunch of times with where to put the ruler, but it's helpful if you can to measure some distances or to set up a scale that says in my drawing every centimeter equals say five centimeters in real life. Pick your own scale depending upon your needs. So let's now draw the ray diagram. So the ray diagram basically is that we're going to draw some rays of light that emanate from the tip of this object. So the blue thing is the object. An arrow is very easy to do an image for. First ray that I'm going to draw is like this. This is parallel to the principal axis. What that means is that if I were to take a ruler and run it from focal point to this point where these intercept, that the, I could draw a dashed line like this following the ruler, 
And if I continue the dashed line over here, this dashed line is the line along which the reflected ray is going to run. So I can draw in my reflected ray like this. Here's the reflected ray. This dashed line, let's call it a virtual ray. And you see that it's basically going through the focal point, F. I can continue it if I want, but I'm going to stop it there. All right, so that's ray number one that we want to Ray number two, we want to draw so that it, basically you could think of it as set your ruler so that it, it runs from this point to this point, the center of the circle. So ray number two is basically going to be like this. It's going to hit here. And if I draw the virtual continuation of this ray, it's a dashed line like this that runs through the center of the circle. And if I wanted to draw the reflected ray, it would be basically along the same line that this incident ray uh, came in along. So in other words, this is a retroreflected ray. It hits the mirror, turns straight around, and bounces straight back along the path that it came. Where these two dash lines intersect, that is where you're going to form the image of this object. So the image in this case is maybe like this. So here is the image of the arrow this point where these intercept is actually where the tip of the arrow happens to be. So if you draw everything to scale, again using a ruler, using a protractor, etc., you can actually measure what is this distance here and then use your scale to figure out how far away this image is from the mirror. What is this image distance? So we can label these distances, by the way. This right here is the object distance, DO. Or in your textbook, I guess, actually it uses a capital D. Most textbooks use a lowercase d, uh, or at least most of the textbooks that I've worked with. And it is the distance to the point on the mirror that intercepts the principal axis. This distance in here is di, the image distance. And you can set up mathematically an equation that relates all of these things to each other. Uh, basically, the equation usually runs that 1 over do plus 1 over di should be equal to 1 over the focal length. So if you know the focal length and you know the object distance, you should be able to figure out the image distance. You could also do this by drawing everything to scale and just measuring with the ruler. Most of the questions that you're actually asked, though, in physical science, don't they don't really ask where exactly is the image. Some of them do. Uh, you can measure and get it. Most of the things that they ask for are maybe to describe the image. So in looking at this image, just qualitatively, we see that the image is upright. That means basically that this arrow is pointing upward, it starts here, it ends here. This arrow is pointing upward, it starts on the same principal axis, it ends up here. If the arrow points in the other direction, then it's called an inverted image. Second of all, we see that this image is clearly shorter than the object. So the image in this case is smaller than the object. And this smaller or bigger effect, because you can create images that are larger, although not usually with these convex mirrors, 
this the smaller or larger effect basically is has to do with magnification this is called lateral magnification and what this magnification does is it, it, it basically tells you how much bigger or smaller will this be compared to this and the magnification factor is usually given by negative di over do so what's the negative sign for well the last thing that we can put in here is the question of is this a real image or is it a virtual image and in this case as with most of these images you get image is virtual so the, what it means for it to be a virtual image is that you don't have real rays of light crossing here the real actual ray of light came here and reflected this way this real actual ray of light came here and it reflected this way if you wanted by the way to do a double check your third ray of light you basically can draw so that it hits right here where the principal axis and the mirror meet and then it should reflect off like this so that this angle and this angle are equal and so you can then draw your dashed line by holding your ruler along this line and it should in fact meet and in my case it doesn't quite meet but if I had a ruler it probably would end up meeting over here and so it would basically do something like this so this thing is in any case a virtual image probably we should have drawn this guy like this I'm kinda eyeballing it this guy right here is in any case a virtual image because these are virtual rays that form it not the real reflected rays so this minus sign that's in this equation basically what we do is if the image is real then this value right here is positive so let's let's put in a, a few notes down here the object distance is always positive that's just how we define our sort of positive negative scale what side of the mirror are we on etc this one right here is positive if the image is real and it is negative if virtual so you can see here that we have a virtual image that means that di is negative that means we have a negative over a positive and it's a negative of all that so that's negative times negative divided by positive that gives us positive so when m is positive you get an image which is upright so this is m greater than zero if m is less than zero so if m is less than zero you will have inverted image the other thing is that the actual magnitude of m when you actually get these numbers di and do and you divide them by each other if m if m is greater than one then image is larger than object and if on the other hand m is less than one then image is smaller than object okay so that's how you interpret all this stuff that you're getting out of here again you can always try to draw this diagram and draw it to scale with each of these lines being sort of two scale um, using a ruler using a protractor in this case to make sure that uh, 
you know, that your lines actually have the same angle here and here. You could cheat by drawing a upside down object here that's the same height as this object and this line should pass through the tip of the object that you've drawn here, the fake object. In any case, that's not only the setup but also how to carry the problem through. You can do it algebraically with this equation or you can do it with the diagrams like this. Your book, of course, only teaches you how to do it with the diagrams. In the notes, you should also see this equation for how to do it with math. So the book often will ask you to estimate stuff. So it'll say stuff like, an object is placed 15 centimeters from the convex mirror, and the mirror has a focal length of 10 centimeters. Where is the image, and what are its characteristics? So you could try drawing this thing by drawing this guy to be actually 15 centimeters from here. You could draw these two dots to be actually 10 centimeters from here. You can draw this first line so that the dashed version of it passes through the focal point. You can draw the second line with a ruler. Uh, here's C, it's 20 centimeters, so that the ruler is lined up with C and lined up with this, and draw this dashed line. Then you can draw the image over here. You can measure how far this is. You should measure 6 centimeters in this case. And you can see that, yeah, it's upright, it's virtual, it's smaller or reduced compared to the original object. So I hope that this helps you figure out whatever it is that you're stuck on. Um, ho hopefully this at least gives you the hints you need to set up these problems and you can then modify it as needed to answer the problem that you have. So thanks for watching.